Hey everybody and welcome. My name is Donna. I'm the technology and media librarian at the Upper Arlington Public Library here with the first video in our two part cut the cord series. This is our basic how to get started video. So in this video, we're going to go over the absolute basics, how you watch TV now and how you envision watching TV in the future, what you pay now and what you want to pay in the future, what you get for that cost, the devices that you're using versus the devices that you need in order to stream. There's a lot to cover. We're going to break it down step by step. Um, and I also want to let you know that there is a separate video strictly on free services. I'm really excited about this one. Um, for me, finding free content online is the best part of cord cutting, so much so that I just created a separate deep dive video on that, and it is linked below. So here's the thing about cord cutting to keep in mind during this video and during future videos. It seems really intimidating because of terminology. So you'll see things like MBPS and wonder what that means. What's a media streamer? What does on demand mean versus live streaming? You need context and definitions for those terms. And once you have them, you realize that cord cutting is just like any other shopping experience. It comes down to what you want to pay and what you get for what you're paying. To that end, we're going to first focus on bills and budgeting. Look beyond the total cost for the cable bill and to see how it breaks down. Um, you can consider something like unbundling a cable package if you have bundled services like cable, internet, and landline phone. So what would your cost be if you unbundle your cable from your internet or if you drop cable and phone altogether? You should also consider if you're using all of the TVs that have cable boxes in your household. Now, if you're a one TV household, that's really not an issue. But if you have multiple TVs, are you paying for just one set-top cable box and receiver and DVR or many cable boxes and DVRs? Because you can eliminate those costs outright either by eliminating cable TV altogether or by cutting back on the number of TVs that you use for cable TV. And then something else that you need to consider is when it comes to your internet, are you paying monthly to rent a modem and a router from your internet service or cable provider? Because you can compare the rental costs per month to buying a router outright by considering purchasing your own router. And keep in mind too, that if you purchase a faster router, that speeds up your connection to your streaming services, which is absolutely crucial. And lastly, you can shop around at other cable and internet services providers available in your area. And with your current cable provider, you do want to find out what your costs will be if you were to unbundle your cable from internet and just go with internet service and switch to streaming altogether. But be aware of other cable and internet service providers available in your area, assuming you're not locked into a contract that would be too costly to break. So research your local service providers, their monthly cost, and their advertised internet speed. There are a few websites that I recommend where you can search by zip code and then compare results. Yes, I've linked them below, but you'll use these sites to compare prices from each service provider and see what new customers would pay. And then beyond your bill, consider what devices you have in your household, AKA, if you eliminate your cable boxes, how do you plan to watch TV? Now, if you're only planning to watch streaming services on your laptop or on a mobile device like a smartphone or tablet, you can skip this part of the video. But if you are using a television, you need to consider the following. Are you watching on one TV or are you watching, again, on many around the house? Is your TV or your TVs a smart TV? That is, can it connect to the internet by itself or do you need an intermediary between the television and your streaming services? Because if you don't have a smart TV, you need that intermediary. It's called a media streamer. And we talk about them at the end of this video. You do want to keep streamers in mind throughout the video because it's about your budget. If you don't have a smart TV, you need one media streamer per television you plan to use, and that can add up. So be realistic about how many devices around your house you're actually going to use. And the final thing you need to evaluate before cutting the cord, and this is the most important one I can talk about in this video, so if you're going to take notes on anything, please make it this section. It's your internet speed. So you can continue with your current internet service provider, or you can shop around. 
either way, your internet speed has to be fast enough for two things. The first is for you to stream the services you want to watch. And the second is for you to stream services simultaneously on the number of devices in your household. So let's break that down. Now you'll remember that I mentioned Mbps at the beginning of this video. That stands for megabits per second, and it refers to the speed at which data travels from the internet to you in your home. Now I'll use Netflix as my example here. When you watch a movie or television series on Netflix, you are continuously downloading that content to your home through your internet connection. The faster your connection, the smoother your viewing experience. The slower your connection, ooh, you're going to see the buffering signal a lot and your picture quality will look fuzzy or choppy or just poor in general. So Netflix and other streaming services recommend a minimum speed that you need to have so that you can watch their content with no interruptions. But here's the catch. That speed applies to each device that you use. So if you have one TV watching Netflix, that's called one stream, your speed must be at least three megabits per second for standard definition quality. If you have two TVs in your household watching Netflix at the same time, that's two streams, and each has to have at least three megabits per second of internet speed for a total of six megabits per second. Just multiply the number of devices streaming at the same time to get your total internet speed requirement. So how does this tie into your home internet connection, the one that you're paying for monthly? Well, you wanna make sure that you're getting the speed that your provider has promised you. Now, for the average person, chances are that you're fine. Six megabits per second is frankly not a lot, but if you've already noticed that your internet is slow, definitely do a speed test. There are several websites that offer speed tests, and yes, I've linked them below. Um, the ones that you're seeing on my screen here are speedtest.net and one called fast.com, which is provided by Netflix. Check your speed, check it again, and again, for good measure. You wanna check your speed at different times of the day over a few days. If you're not getting the speed that you want, it might be time for you to negotiate with your provider, contact them about the speed that you're experiencing, or you can seek out a new provider. Now that you know what you're actually paying, the next step is to set a monthly budget for yourself. Now this is an unglamorous and kind of difficult part of the process because a budget is so personal and it really depends on your circumstances. So my best advice for a budget would be this. If you're budgeting based on monthly payments, look at your total payments now and set a goal for each month. So in an example scenario, let's say that your current cable and internet bill is $115 per month. And let's say you've also unbundled your cable, so you're down to just internet and that's $50 per month. And overall, you'd like to pay no more than $85. That way you're saving about $30 per month, which comes out to about $360 per year. So you only want to spend ultimately $35 on streaming services per month. It's not bad. I'll come back to this budget number as we go over some of the major streaming services later in the video, but as you start to add services, keep your budget in mind. Even if the budget isn't flexible, the great thing about streaming services is that they are flexible. You pay for them month by month, you put together whatever combination of services you want, you add or drop them at your discretion, and you can try out services one month and discontinue them the next without any obligation. Okay, so thank you for sticking with me through the not so fun parts of this video and breathe a sigh of relief for yourself because now we do get to the fun part, the really, really fun part. This is where you get to pick out the shiny new services with all of the movies and television shows that you want to watch. So before we go over the differences between individual subscription services, we're just going to briefly distinguish between two types of streaming services, on-demand and live streaming. So the big difference is that live is exactly what it sounds like. Live is live, you watch when it's airing. With on-demand, you pick the time and the date that you watch the content available on your streaming service. As long as something is on Netflix or on Hulu or on Amazon Prime, all example of on-demand streaming services, if it's there, you decide when you watch it. So you don't tune in on Sundays at 8 p.m. You don't have to DVR or something if you missed it. If it's there, you watch it when you want to. 
So everything you're going to see on my screen right now, this is from Netflix, by the way, you can watch at the time and date of your choosing. So we're going to talk about Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, Disney Plus, and a few other services. Um, they're all going to have movies and television series, documentaries, a little bit of overlap from service to service, but for the most part, you're going to see that each streaming service mentioned here has developed its own little niche. So Netflix has both movies and television shows, some of which Netflix produces and which are therefore exclusive to its platform. That's television shows like Stranger Things or Cobra Kai, movies like The Irishman and Marriage Story, acclaimed documentaries like American Factory. Of course, they do have a library of older films and television shows for all ages, but if something is exclusive to Netflix, you cannot watch it anywhere else. Now, Netflix is not the option to pick if you want to watch current episodes of your favorite television shows. The best you're going to do is previous seasons, which you can absolutely binge watch, but it's not going to have, say, next day episodes of something that's currently airing. Netflix does have different price tiers, and those will reflect the number of screens on which you can watch simultaneously. Remember, we talked about streams, and it will reflect the video quality for those streams as well. So if you do want current seasons of television, Hulu is another option. Now, Hulu has also original programming, again, exclusive to its content library. It also has movies available, but it does have current shows available next to day. So if you're watching a current season of a television show on a major network, the most recent episode is usually available about a day after it originally aired. And Hulu can be a pretty low cost option, especially if you're willing to sit through commercials. So Hulu has a $5.99 per month version that includes commercials, and it's about twice that if you want the ad-free version of Hulu. Now, Amazon Prime is another major on-demand streaming platform. Like Netflix and Hulu, it has its original and highly acclaimed programs that are also exclusive to Amazon. Those are shows like The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, The Boys, Fleabag, uh, it also features movies and series from other providers. It also has sports documentaries and past games. So if you already subscribe to Amazon Prime as a shopper, then Prime Video is available to you at no additional cost. Or you can sign up just for Prime Video by itself, and that's about $8.99 per month. So Disney Plus is where you'll find the Disney library of animated and live action films. It has Pixar films, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Star Wars movies and television shows, and of course they're planning to do more original programming in the future. But guys, Disney Plus is where you're going to watch Baby Yoda, so um, right there I'm already on board. Um, but if you're wondering what to watch after you've exhausted the Disney library, Disney Plus does offer something that other on-demand streaming services don't, and that's a bundle package. So while Hulu and Prime will let you add channels to their service, that's really just it. You're, you're adding one cost on top of another. Now, Disney Plus allows you to either subscribe to Disney Plus alone, that's $6.99 per month, or you can bundle Disney Plus with the Hulu commercial version and ESPN Plus, and that gives you $12.99 per month as your total cost for all three of those. So if you're keeping an eye on your budget and you're already considering Disney Plus and Hulu individually, and you're interested in streaming sports as well, you want to look out for bundle deals like that one. Now, before this video gets too long, I do want to move on to streaming services. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about these next services individually, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there are more options for on-demand streaming. Um, again, these have their own mix of original programming, plus a library of movies and television series. Um, that's Acorn TV, Apple TV Plus, there's a BritBox. CBS All Access, there's HBO Max, and then there's also Peacock. Now I bring these up to illustrate, number one, there are a lot of services competing for your attention and for your money right now. Number two, be aware that content comes and goes as these services add and remove movies and shows. So one element of cord cutting that can be so frustrating is how to roll with these changes. Now, one month you can watch an entire television series on Netflix, you know, maybe something popular from the 90s, like about 620-somethings who live in New York and go to a coffee shop and you've 
want to binge watch that whole series, but by the next month, that same show has moved in its entirety to HBO Max, which maybe you don't subscribe to. So you do need to weigh those options is if you are watching one service and you lose the content that you love on it, do you want to migrate to a new service or give up that show or movie? So keep that in mind. Uh, And number three, not all price plans are created equally. So think about what you can live with or without. Um, You will pay more to watch without commercials if commercials are part of the service that you're interested in. Um, Always check the price plans to see how many people can watch at once, those streams, simultaneous streams. And again, what internet speed is required to stream per screen. And then if it's important to you that you can download and watch offline, maybe you travel frequently and you want to be able to watch these shows and movies when you're not at home with your active internet connection, um, not every service offers that option. But also remember that you are completely in control here. If a service drops the content that you love and offers nothing else that you want, you can cancel it and move on. And if they reintroduce something that you are interested in, you can resume your subscription. You are paying month by month, so you can always resubscribe when something new comes along. And to that end, if you're not sure what shows or movies stream on which services, I recommend a free trial because depending on the service you pick, that can be as long as one month. Sometimes it's just as short as one week, Um, but you can binge watch a lot in one week. And then I also recommend browsing an online streaming guide. Um, The one I'm demonstrating here is called Just Watch. It is linked below and you can search by show to see where it's streaming. So if a subscription is required, you can check out that service and see what other content is available and maybe it's of interest to you. So I'm filming this video in late October in 2020. So hello to future viewers if you are indeed watching. Of course, all of the costs mentioned here are absolutely subject to change. I mean, this is a snapshot in time of October 2020. But the last thing I want to mention about on-demand services is they tend to be comparatively low cost. So the most expensive one that I've demonstrated here is in the Netflix premium package. It's $15.99 per month. So if we go back to our original budget, and just FYI, I'm not accounting for taxes here, so I'm trying not to get too close to that $35 total, just to give you an idea of what it looks like though. Um, So our total goal was $85 per month. We're spending $50 already in internet services. Now I could spend my $35 on Netflix Premium, $15.99, the Disney Plus bundle with Hulu, with ads and ESPN Plus, and that's $12.99. That gives me a total of just under $29, so within my budget. I could also subscribe to Netflix Basic for $8.99, Hulu with ads for $5.99, and Prime Video for $8.99. And that gives me a total of just under $24, which has a little wiggle room. So hey, let's go ahead and add something else. Um, maybe Acorn TV at $5.99 per month. I love British and international drama series, so that might be a good investment. And then I could add this Peacock service with the free tier. It's going to give me com- commercials, but yeah, I could live with commercials. That's zero dollars. And my new total is just under $30, so still within my budget. And that's just an example of how you can mix and match services in order to hit that budget without going over. Now, live streaming services are cable without the cable boxes. They, are, they have the look and feel of cable TV, minus the cable prices and the long-term contracts. It's really just live TV that you're watching with your internet connection, and you can use it as a direct cable replacement. All you need to do is find the service that has the channels you want to watch and sign up. Now that said, here's what you need to keep in mind. The first is your budget. Live streaming TV tends to cost more than on-demand services do. The second thing is channels. Not all stations will be available on every service at every price point, and some services have only as few as 30 channels from which to choose. So if you're looking for specific sports or cable news channels in particular, this may be an area where you make some trade-offs like paying a little bit more or you try to supplement with free services. The third thing to think about is your DVR. So if you can't watch live, does the service let you record and watch later using cloud storage called a cloud DVR? And if so, what is the storage capacity and how long are your shows going to be saved for you to watch later? And does that cost more if you need to add a cloud DVR? 
And that's on top of the other things that you already need to consider, like simultaneous streams, so how many people on separate devices can watch at once, and then there's the recommended internet speed in order to stream. Now here are some of the major services that offer live streaming television. The first is Hulu plus live TV. This will incorporate the Hulu on demand library with the live streaming television channels. And that does include sports channels and live local channels, depending on your area that comes out to about $54.99 per month for 65 channels plus cloud DVR. There's also Sling TV. Now Sling costs much less. It's about $30 per month, but it does offer fewer channels and it does have two different plans. One is called Sling Blue and the other Sling Orange. Those have different channels and different numbers of simultaneous streams available depending on which one you select. There's also YouTube TV. Now that's a little bit higher at $64.99 per month. And again, remember I am filming this in October of 2020, so this could change as quickly as next month or next year. Uh, but that does include 85 channels, including sports and live local channels, also depending on your area, and then unlimited cloud DVR storage. This is a short list. It is by no means complete. Again, it only illustrates that there are several live streaming services out there. So I'll also mention AT&T TV Now. There's Fubo TV, which has a particular focus on sports. And there's also Philo TV. This time, if we go back to our budget from earlier, uh, but let's take a look. So our goal was $85 per month in expenses. Our internet costs are $50, leaving us with $35 per month as our available amount for streaming services. And just looking at this and comparing it to live streaming service prices, my fictional budget is gone, um, if, especially if I wanna have both on-demand and live streaming, because several of the live streaming services start at more than our total streaming budget. And of course, I completely made up $85. That's a fake number for the sake of this video and presentation but it is so important to be realistic and to weigh your options. So there's a couple of things that you could do here. Um, one would be to increase the amount that you spend per month. If live streaming TV is more important to you than what's on demand, um, there's always the opportunity to pick up on-demand services only for the duration of a new program or sign up for a free trial and do as much binging as you can during that time period. There's also the possibility of supplementing on-demand television with free streaming. I don't go over free streaming in this video because there are so many options that cover live news, movies, television, and it's worth pointing out the differences among those free services. So I have linked that video about free streaming services below. If you are budget conscious and maybe experienced a little sticker shock over the cost of live TV, all is not lost, you can still get local over the air channels with a small investment, and that is the Humble Antenna. All you do is connect it to your TV, scan for channels, and it is a cost-effective, simple solution to getting your local channels. There's no subscription required for an antenna. There's no monthly cost for an antenna. It's a one-time purchase and then you're able to get to your local channels. So I recommend looking at your local station map to see what channels are in fact available in your range. I also suggest visiting websites where you can compare antenna types and those sites are yes, linked below. And I definitely suggest that you try an antenna before you buy an antenna. So the Upper Arlington Public Library, here's my plug for the library. It circulates, um, at no cost to you, three different types of HGTV antennas. So you can check out an antenna for one week to see whether it's the right option for your household. And there are three different types with different ranges. Um, a link to our catalog where you can request them is in the description below. Uh, the last thing I want to discuss are the devices I mentioned way back at the start of the video. And that's streaming media devices, sometimes called media streamers, sometimes called streaming players, and sometimes called streamers. They all mean the same thing. They are an interface for how you view your streaming services on your television. Again, if you're doing away with a physical TV altogether, um, this really isn't a factor. And if you have a smart TV that has access to all of the apps or services that you want to watch, you can disregard the media streamer if necessary. 
but if you are requiring one, here's how they work. You connect your streamer to your TV, you connect your internet to the streamer, and then you use the streamer to connect to the channel for the service of your choice. Basically look like an app, almost like on your smartphone or tablet screen. So I'm using a Roku here in this image. Um, this is actually broadcast live from my living room, hello. Uh, but Rokus are not the only type of streamer. There is Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Chromecast. Those are some of the major players and all have pros and cons to consider. Uh, now streamers are one-time purchases without monthly subscriptions. Right away, the biggest factor is the cost. I don't know. Apple TV is the highest price. It costs more than $100 per Apple TV. Roku and Fire TV can start as low as $30 or $40, depending on the model that you buy. You also want to consider how easy the device is to set up and how easy it is to use. So if you're not comfortable troubleshooting your technology, then you really want one that you can essentially plug and play. There are the stick versions of streaming devices. Those plug into your television and they also have a power source and then they're ready to set up. So if you're already thinking about a budget, channel options, number of streams, internet speeds, all of these factors that go into cord cutting, you want to pick a streamer that you don't have to think too hard about. So pick one that's easy to navigate, that has the channels that you want to find easily. Is it cluttered looking? Is it clean? Is it easy to add new channels when you want to? Or do you have to search around a lot for those? So if it doesn't even offer the channels that you want to watch, or if it doesn't fit with the other devices that you're comfortable using, that all goes into the decision behind picking a media streamer. Apple TVs will look and feel familiar to anyone who has other Apple products, and they also sign right in with your existing Apple ID to connect your TV to your other Apple devices. Um, Fire TV, along those same lines, works with your Amazon account. It can be linked to your Amazon Echo for voice control. It does tend to promote Amazon content first and foremost, but that can be a huge help if you're not sure what you want to watch in the first place. Um, and if you're a Google person, you might be really comfortable with Chromecast. Um, now, Chromecast does require you to have a phone or a tablet to use as your remote control, whereas Apple TV, Fire TV, and Roku have their own separate remote controls. Now, I do want to show you um, this older Roku. This is the model that we have here at the library. And I want to illustrate how an older device can be really difficult to troubleshoot. And you can see the remote on this Roku has buttons for services that no longer exist. I find that kind of hilarious. Um, but this also is not going to be updated as easily as a new Roku. There are some channels like Peacock that I probably can't even add to this Roku because those channels are so new and they haven't been formatted for my device. You know, speaking of Roku, um, that's not tied to any provider or company in particular. It tends to be a pretty neutral option. And like I said, it does have these buttons that go straight to the streaming services. So if you are a Netflix or Hulu person, you press the button and it takes you directly to that channel. So you do want to think about convenience. You want to think about the device that checks all of these boxes for you. That matters. So I mentioned again in the video intro that there is a second video in this series. So now's the time to check that out if you want to learn more about free streaming services. It's linked below. I've also linked our contact information and our Cut the Cord resource guide below. Now the resource guide is available on the library's website for you to download. So if you want to, after this video is over, go through all of the information, it does break down all of these different options and their costs, or at least their costs current as of today. Um, but I'd really love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear how your Cut the Cord journey is going, about services you've tried, services you've rejected, um, devices that you're using and just what the process has been like from you. So please get in touch. Thank you for watching and I hope to hear from you soon.